Today, I am sharing a very overlooked tool that could drastically impact how you run your business, and it's free to start out with. Hey, yeah, I'm Amanda, and welcome to the Best Damn Coach Podcast, where I will teach you how to coach yourself, how to coach your clients, and how to run your coaching business. The number one goal of this show, though, is to help you be the best damn coach you can be so your clients go out and tell the world about you. So let's do the damn thing. Hey, coaches. Since becoming the Best Damn Coach podcast, we are trying to climb the Apple charts. And one of the ways that helps us do that is by you sharing this episode and leaving a review. So if you've never left a review, we would so appreciate bouncing over to the review section, telling us what you find of value from this episode or any of the BDC episodes and share with a community or a colleague or a fellow coach that you think would find this podcast so beneficial. We are grateful that you tune in every week to listen, and I am so honored that you are on this journey with me to become the best damn coach possible. Welcome to today's episode, which is a very practical episode for which I am going to walk you through how to use Google Drive to completely run your entire company and to not just support the company, but to also support your clients. I felt like this was a necessity to show that some of the most impactful tools that we have inside of our business are ones that are free or at least pretty free. And I think sometimes we overlook that because there's all these cool softwares out there that definitely can streamline the business and can support you. And sometimes I found that adding in those additional platforms only added more of a headache for me. Stripping it down, I just feel like basics always work. So today, I'm going to walk you through the functions of the Google Drive and what you can do to totally maximize the features that are inside of Google Drive. So you're definitely going to want to go visit the show notes because I'm going to give some pictures for this. That's going to benefit you as well. And of course, like any of the episodes, if you have questions, please reach out. And if you know a coach, you have colleagues that are coaches or even online service space owners, I would so appreciate if you would share this very practical episode with them because that's what I'm all about is I want to find ways that you can honestly maximize profit. And I find that with a lot of clients, they've kind of piecemealed Frankenstein, if you will, parts of their business together based on what other people have said. And I find that they're ending up paying maybe six different softwares at $49 a pop. And so they're $300 into software that they actually don't need. And we've grown our business utilizing Google Drive the entire time. And truthfully, bringing on my OBM, she even took it to a next level for us. And I want to show you some of the features or talk to you about some of those features. The first, though, is just describing some of the basic language around Google Drive, just in case you're not that familiar with it. I want to be really clear on what it is and where you can access it, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a couple different Google products that exist out there. So the first is the drive in general. And I want you to imagine the drive as this central storage compartment. It's like a giant filing cabinet. You can actually access the drive for free. You can tap into the documents without paying a cent. And I think it's something like 15 gigabytes of storage or it was, I don't know the exact amounts, but it gives you a pretty great amount of storage for free from the beginning. And its basis or purpose is to have great accessibility and shared features to utilize some of the apps that they offer, which I'll talk about more in just a second. You also have this other thing called G Suite Google Business. And the important part about that is it's more of a collaborative option that allows you to integrate various users. And you can integrate your unique domain that you have. So this would allow you to have Amanda at amanda-walker.com and also an email that's support at amanda-walker.com. So you purchase the domain separately and then you're able to integrate it into the G Suite offering so that you can fully utilize various accounts and create and collaborate with you know different members of your team. 
In the beginning, if you were to use Gmail, it would just be something at gmail.com. So you definitely want to look at G Suite and Google Business. I think they've kind of renamed it so that you have accessibility to use that domain if it matters to you from the beginning. So if you think of the products, you have Google Chrome and Google Chrome is just the browser, right? Google's browser. Then you'll notice in the Google products, you have the drive, which is the storage compartment. And then inside that storage compartment, once you open up your drive, you have access to all of the apps that Google has to offer. And so that would include Google Docs, which is basically like a Word document if you grow up using those products, or Google Sheets, which is like spreadsheets, Excel. You have Google Slides, which is like a Microsoft PowerPoint. You even have Google Forms, where you can use forms to integrate to send to clients, or you can tap into their intake forms, et cetera. And inside the BDC, we teach you how to use all of these things and integrate them flawlessly so you can have this very user-friendly and free technology to run your business. So I want to share a little bit more about which of these I use and what we do with them so you can see kind of the big picture down on what the possibilities are. First and foremost, we run our entire business out of Google Drive. So we use a project management software called monday.com. And that kind of assigns tasks, and this is how we communicate when tasks are complete. But the drive is where we are collaborating and we are sharing files consistently. So for instance, we have a whole structure of all of the different folders that we use and title inside of our business, one of them being the podcast folder. So inside that podcast folder, Imagine it's like more files organized by month. So we have September, October, November. And the cool thing is we have so many collaborators. We have myself who does the recording and then I drop in the recorded files when I'm complete. My podcast manager can dive right into Drive, pulls the files, edits them and drops them in so that maybe Angelie, my assistant, my virtual assistant can go in and make audiograms from them or clips for social media. Everybody can tap into the same files of notes, et cetera. So it's such a cool place to collaborate. And the really awesome part, and one of the most important parts of Drive that I'll probably mention 15 times, is that it automatically saves, which is fantastic. So if in the event, myself and one of my team members are in there, it actually gives you a little icon that's usually represented of some sort of animal at the top and lets me know that somebody else is in the file. So if I want to go in and make my edits, they can too. Both are saved live, saves such a large amount of time. In the old days, I used to save a file and then somebody have to rename it and you share these files back and forth. It's so archaic. It's not that way inside of the drive. So that's a really important part is we have a main drive that houses the entire company. So we all know where we can find things and it's shared with the right users. You can select who you want to share certain folders with. So for instance, one of the things that I use Google Drive for is my client files. Those are private. I only have access to them. Nobody from my team gets access to them. The workflow for me is when I'm working with a one-to-one client, I use the drive to house their client files. So as soon as I start work with a one-to-one client, I create a client folder with the client's name on it. And inside that client folder becomes our storehouse of information that we use throughout the client's journey with me. So one thing I do is I create a set of notes. So it's the client's notes that I start from day one until, you know, depends on, could be years, you know, about that client still working with me. And I create basically just a chronological library of notes. I dictate, I take the important pieces, I'm keeping them inside, and I'm also writing notes to myself as the provider so I know you know, some of the key pieces of language that I want to come back to for the next time I'm with them, and also any tasking homework that I give that I can check in on and check in that it's complete before our next session. So I love the client notes feature. It's, again, free and easy, and I've tapped into that since day one. The other piece I love is that we can share files back and forth. So if there is an assignment I give and maybe I give some journaling prompts or maybe they're going to go out and work on, you know, a freebie or some web copy or they're struggling with a specific client and they're going to go do some work around that, then I can create that Google Doc for them and give them access. They can do their work inside of it and then I can go in and when they're complete, they can tag me in it or let me know in another way that it's complete. And I can go in and access that. 
then you can leave feedback. I can highlight and tag them and say, hey, what does this mean specifically? Or what did you notice? Or what would it look like if, right? This is part of the, for me, the full one-to-one immersive coaching experience, this support around all of these pieces that it takes to build this thriving business and support your clients. So I love the live sharing back and forth. And for me to be able to give feedback to clients away from live sessions is so important. I can also create recordings for them. So if I have a one-to-one session, I don't record all of them. And sometimes they're just so juicy. I can tell them like, hey, I'm going to record this because maybe I'm going to show them something or teach them something, or I'm going to coach something that I think is relative for them to go back and visit. Then I can capture that recording. I can drop it into their client file, and then I can share with them and give them access so that they can go back and listen at their own discretion as well. Okay, so kind of talk about the client file there is one really powerful way. And I I believe there's lots of great softwares out there, but they're paid and you have to learn another system and don't fix what's not broken is kind of my philosophy around this as well. The other really cool thing, there's a couple of cool things I've supported clients to create because they want to keep their budget low or they were just really confident inside of the drive is I've supported clients actually use Google Drive as a landing page. Maybe they didn't have a website yet. They weren't at the place where they wanted to invest in one yet, or they just wanted to make it simple. We've actually worked on inside of the drive. We created a document that they utilized as a sales page, basically following similar technique as we would to build out a sales page. And they dropped that link in their profile and they sold from it right? It doesn't have to be fancy. It just has to provide the right psychology and the right information for people to want to say yes. So I think we get caught up in the minutia of it looking like perfect. And oh my gosh, it's got to look like the person who's been doing it for five years. And in doing that, it holds us back from even taking action and putting our work out into the world. Another really cool thing I've helped a client do is actually build out their entire program of content for clients using Drive. So what we ended up doing was, again, it was to save on this kind of investment and learning how to use another software. And she was really confident inside of Drive. And so what we ended up thinking is I realized, like, what if we build out a table of contents? So we created a home page with a table of contents for them. So that was the page that they got direct access to. But then inside that, they could click each component of the table of contents that would take them to a different teaching or a different module. And she was able to build out this robust content. And this was kind of like her first round. So she was building out the content for her clients and she was kind of putting people through it before she turned all of that over into Simplero, which is my system of choice and build out actual an actual membership site for it. And it was a great way to kind of build the ship as she was sailing it and have all the content available and get feedback on it, you know, before she ends up putting it into an all-in-one stop shop like Simplero. Another aspect of the drive that I love is the calendar option literally saves me hours of time. I don't know what else I would do. I rely on my calendar so much. I integrate it with Acuity, which is our booking software. So the moment someone books a session with me, a coaching session or whatever the thing is, podcast interview, right? It automatically syncs and has access to my Google calendar. So it holds that space for me. So I'm never having to work with, oh my gosh, like, is this appointment there? Is it not? What happens on my Google calendar is kind of my life as far as what the white space actually is for my week. And that is so, so powerful to really have those things integrated. The other thing that I think is beautiful about Google Calendar is that there are so many templates in there. If you've never explored, you can go in there and take a look and see that if you go into Google Docs, there's a little arrow to the right and it says blank document or from a template. And you can go right into from a template and there's already beautiful like options that are inside of it. So if you have some sort of branding, you could modify colors or something. Or if you're looking for a specific thing that is accessible to you as well and you can utilize these. I also make templates for my people using the drive. So for example, in the BDC, we have these two vaults of done for you templates we've created. One of the things I teach is a framework on how to collect testimonials. And I provide a template for testimonial collection. And so I'm able to share that link with my people. They can go grab it, make a copy of it. And then that copy is used 
for them to repurpose inside of their own business. And so it's such great user friendliness as far as sharing and compatibility so that you, again, don't have to go into Canva and make something fancy or find another sharing software. It's all at your fingertips. And I think the top reasons that Drive is amazing is because of the storage. You can upgrade and you pay very small amounts to upgrade and because of the accessibility. You can also access the Drive via your phone. You can download all the apps, the Word app, the Sheets app, whatever it is, your email, right? All of that can be at your hands if you desire it to be, or you can shut it down if you don't want it to be as well. And the fact that everything automatically saves is so profound when you come to that place where you have multiple hands from a team in there working or just in general, working with your client and being able to share back and forth and create homework assignments that you send. I mean, the world is kind of endless. There's been so many things that I've done with clients around Google Docs as far as assigning homework and I send them a link and I can provide that in an email. It's an extremely powerful tool that I think is underrated inside of your business and can definitely be of benefit. So I would love to know know as you listen to this leave us a review let me know are you using google drive and if so what's your favorite way to explore it or let me know in my stories on instagram when i'm talking about the episode this week let me know what your favorite way to leverage google drive is and if i missed any ways that you're leveraging it completely in your business then please share. And again, I appreciate you guys sharing this episode. If you find it valuable to any other coaches or service providers that could definitely use a reminder that simple is always so effective. One of the most important things you will ever do as a coach is ask questions. So I've put together a simple go-to resource that you can have in your back pocket as a coach of 10 powerful questions I believe every coach should know. So go ahead and head on over to amanda-walker.com forward slash questions to grab yours now.